how to develop a weight loss mindset, the best weight loss mindset. More information, DrewNerod.com, today's sponsor. It's yours truly. So you can sort of see I'm quite lean, you know. I'm a very lean individual, um, currently 76 kilos, 77 kilos, body fat, very lean. And I'm fully hydrated, fully carved up. Light as I've been at six foot, it's 59 kilos, and uh, which is a great weight for cycling, performance, and running. Uh, currently 77 kilos, good weight for being an OnlyFans content creator, if you know, you know. But what's the weight loss mindset? I've coached thousands of people, and I love it. This is one of my gifts to society, is helping people get, guys get lean, or women get slim. Because I don't really think that women should have body fat levels like men. Estrogen wise, it crashes the estrogen, and we have a lot of mental health uh, performance issues long term, okay? Always focus on long term results. Let's make you lean, all year long, not just lean for summer, not just, you know, like, you want to see vascularity, if you do, if you want to see vascularity, let's go all year, for decades, why just have it for summer, you know, why just have it for a music festival when you can be lean, dry, diced for decades and decades and decades and just stack that on, and not have to starve yourself and restrict your calories and all that stuff, it's, you know, why, why not, you know? It's good for you to be lean for decades. It's not good for you to starve yourself just to be lean for like some bodybuilding comp where you're drying out on diuretics and giving yourself kidney damage. That's not good, okay? It's good for you to be lean and fit for life as a man. It's good for you as a woman to be slim and fit for life. It's good for you and it's possible to have it all year long, okay? Billions of people around the world are living slim. Uh, billion, billions of women are slim, and billions of men, well, not billions, there'll be a billion men who are slim, lean, and a billion women out there who are slim, all right? And they've got basic levels of fitness, but they're not struggling to maintain a light weight. What is that? What's going on there? And then you have people who live in the cities, and they're 17, and they're obese, and all these medications. You know, what's going on there? How does that work? And they've got the same genetics as the people who live out in the country who are living on $2 a day, not starving, and their diet is processed, refined carbohydrate, and they're slim if they're a woman, and if they're a guy, they're like me. They've got, you can see vascularity, you can see the jawline clear, you can see abdominal muscle separation, you can see delts, biceps, you can see some, you know, you can see anatomy chart on your body year round, all right? What's going on there? How is it? You ever notice that when you go traveling? Oh, you don't travel? Okay. Maybe you should. Get a bicycle, go travel the world like I have. And you start to see, hang on, that, that dude over there is shredded. He's not taking any steroids. He wouldn't even know what steroids are. Or maybe they wouldn't in 2024 TikTok. But back in you know, 20 years ago, these people out there didn't know what steroids were. Right? They didn't know what fasting was or blah, blah, blah. All these things that cause you weight gain long term, etc. So people think, oh, I'm going to take tread, I'm going to get cut. Uh, no, because <laughs> if that was the answer, then everyone who uses chain would be cut. That's not the case. Most people use steroids get fat and bloated and have mental health problems and sexual dysfunction. That's facts, okay? Anyway, this topic isn't about steroids. and about steroids. It's talking about weight loss mentality. You want to have, to have a successful weight loss lifestyle, to be slim as a woman for life or to be lean as a man for life, you want to focus on performance, right? Longevity of performance, not just... People are like, well, you, performance, you could just have cocaine and some training and be like, you do a PR that day. Yeah, you could, but that's not going to be good for your long-term performance, is it? We're talking long-term longevity, okay? So it's good for you. if it's good for your long-term performance, it's good for you. If it, help, if it hurts your performance, it ain't good for you, bro, okay? So having that performance mindset instantly crushes all these fads out there, like the keto diet, the carnivore diet, the lion diet, the vulture diet, the hyena diet, the... I eat roadkill and I stink diet, you know? Like, when, when you're under performance, you could do that those diets and your performance that day crashes. Like, you're measuring your watts on the bike or you do benching in the gym. You're like, man, I can't even, I've got no pump, my dick's not working properly. Like, you know, I talk to women, they're like, you know, like, normally I could orgasm really good, but the, the carnivore diet, my cortisol is so high, I can't even come properly. Or get a little, little one. What's, what's up with that? So cortisol. 
And that's why you'll see people some, in the comments, these anonymous people, oh my God, I've, I've, I've cleared up all my allergies on a carnivore diet, keto diet. Yeah, that's because your cortisol is so high because <laughs> your carb is like intake is so low, your cortisol is right up. And my cortisol is high, that's fight or flight. That's like, we don't care about allergies, we're in survival mode, let's just go. So that's why you get these people going, wow, my skin's cleared up, I had psoriasis and it's cleared up. It's because your cortisol is so high, it's shutting down your immune system. And then look up the response with cancer and high cortisol. Okay, there's direct correlation, causation with low cortisol suppressed and cancer growth. Okay, look it up. So the, you know, the, uh, you got guys like Jordan Peterson promoting this nonsense, massively depressed. Jordan Peterson admits he's a drug addict, prescription drug addict, mad depressed. Why would you follow someone's advice like that? The best advice Jordan Peterson has is clean your room. That's about it. Everything else he says, not everything, but majority is just anything nutritional, having kids, garbage. He should have kids, leave a legacy. Uh, Seven billion people in the world, and it's absolutely chaotic out there for kids today. But anyway, we digress, we digress. Weight loss, Harley, weight loss, bring it back to topic. So you just want, you want to set yourself up. I've got these people out there, oh, you know, my family this, and where I live, and it's like, fuck your family, fuck where you live, move, move. <laughs> move your body, move your location, move your mindset. Set yourself up to fucking win. If you notice, all my girlfriends over the years, what, what's, what do they have in common? Okay, they're hot. They, they could be playable models. Yeah, I get that, but they have different genetics, different ages. Some are really tall, some are really petite. You know, some were fat, some were lean. They stay lean. They look, they look even prettier. You know, that all of them improve. But what they all have in common, or many things in common, <laughs> um, is... One thing they have in common is their dedication, okay? They're not just interested in weight loss and looking their best. All my girlfriends have a, many things in common and one of the big ones is they all have an obsession, a dedication, a commitment to having their best aesthetic naturally, in terms of the, you know, maybe except for Freely. But Freely hasn't had any liposuction, okay? She did Botox a bit there. She did her boob job. That was, yeah, she's... We're talking weight loss here, okay? You can liposuction yourself out. It's so simple. Look at the girls that get liposuction and they're fat two weeks later. A month later, they're fat again, you know? Because they didn't change their diet and lifestyle, okay? You can keep sucking all the fat out of you and just keep kind of popping up somewhere else. All that bacon lard and coconut cream and all that stuff just keep topping up. So all the things my girlfriend's have in common is a commitment and dedication to having an amazing aesthetic. And look at them over the years. Look, Just click on any of my videos from 2008 onwards, the girls that feature in there, the main ones all have this commitment, dedication. It's not, not, it's not interest. Well, I'm interested. Tell me tell me what's a good thing. To, how, do, how do I do this? Or how do I lose a couple of kilos? Oh, yeah, I'm interested. It's not that. It's fucking obsessive commitment. They all have that. They all have that, okay? And these women out there, will only get with guys who can support their aesthetic goals, okay? You think they come with me, because they go with me because I've got a big dick and I've got fame and money, and I'm tall and athletic looking? Maybe a bit, but the main thing is, plenty of guys out there like that, that could fit that criteria. The main thing is, though, is I can support their aesthetic goals, okay? So emotionally, I'm like crack cocaine, because I can support their highest goal and that is their aesthetics. All women have aesthetics as a very, very high goal, but not all women are obsessed about having, doing what it takes to get that slim body. And it's, there's a very, very small percent of women out there who will do it, but yet there's a billion women out there who have a slim playboy looking body, you know? Uh, they might not have playboy vibes, but it was a bit of, ma bit of hair and a bit of angle, a bit of, you know, lingerie and stuff, a bit of, you know? bit of vegan chocolate or banana smoothies, they would you know, hype up a bit and they'd have that aesthetic. Like this, if, we, if we measure their hip-waist ratio, shoulder-to-shoulder ratio, they have the, the aesthetic. Okay? They have the Playboy model aesthetic. And they, there's about a billion of women out there like that. And they don't do calories in, calories out. Okay? And they're, they're not dedicated or committed or you know, obsessed about being slim, but the fact their diet and lifestyle just creates this default aesthetic Boom, there you go. And so what all my girlfriends do, I get them eating and living like peasants and they earn big money on social media. All of them do, all of them have. 
uh, enough that they just quit their job. I get them to quit their job. I get them to quit the, the university students or whatever high school. I said, quit, do this, you know, and you make more money. You have more free time, better for your health. All of them do that, and they will all succeed. And so, you know, and it sounds very, very arrogant, and it is, but it's facts. Okay, it's facts. It's facts. So if you, oh, Jeremy, I can't listen to you. You're so arrogant. Okay, but then you lose. You lose. That's like me. That's like me. Be. I can't. I'm. I'm a pretty pissy poor swimmer. That's like me and being a big rip, big fucking current, and I'm like, fuck, I'm really, I think I'm going to drown here. And there's some life jacket who says, I'm the best fucking life jacket, uh, life jacket thrower out there. I, I'm the best lifeguard out there. I'm the fucking G, man. I'm the top G. Listen to me. And I'm like, hey, I'm drowning. You've got a life jacket and a, one of those floaty things. Yeah, you're too arrogant. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm just going to drown over here. Fuck that. I'm like, yeah, you're arrogant. Cool, but you've got a life jacket. You're right. Let me go. Let me, let me, let me live. <laughs> You're all right, Darren Ida, you're arrogant, you're a douchebag, whatever, but your advice fucking works. All your girlfriends are fucking amazing. We walk down the mall, I'm invisible. When I'm walking with all your girlfriends, I'm invisible. No one really looks at me other than like, is that guy creeping on that chick? <laughs> That's fact. Okay, so my templates work better than fucking anyone's. All right? Who out there, who out there has hotter chicks than me, long-term girlfriends, consistently, year after year after year? You know? Uh, and, and, in terms of the, in the weight loss industry. Who, who? I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Let me know. And none of my girlfriends have eating disorders, or none of them are starving themselves, none of them, none of them are doing cocaine and stuff like that. You know, very, very rarely uh, 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 some green tea or a simulant for a time trial is consumed, but very, very rarely, because I don't really think women do that good on stimulants. I think they do better on music, okay? So it's very, very rare, maybe a handful of times a year that Natasha, uh, et cetera, have ever had any stimulants, okay? Because it's just not conducive to proper sleep cycle, and it, generally stimulants create excess anxiety in women, and young women are full of anxiety as it is. Why create more anxiety in the young woman? It's just going to age them, masculinize them, and that's not what I'm into. Um, stress. Women don't do good with stress aesthetically. Stress makes a man more masculine, but stress on a woman, it doesn't increase their SMV. Okay? Again, we're sidestepping here, but in terms of weight loss, you want to have a mentality that you only listen to the very best, but then again, the very best out there. Everyone says they're the fucking best, don't they? But just judge by results. Judge by results, okay? Judge by results. Look at all my girlfriends over the years. Look how much food we get to feast on every single day. We don't, none, of us, none of us track our calories in, calories out. Not that you can even actually do that accurately. It's a total waste of time to track calories in, calories out. All it does is lead to eating disorders and or disordered eating. You cannot accurately track how much calories in every freaking meal, all right? Unless your meal was oil, sugar, and protein powder. Then you could pretty well accurately track it. But who's eating oil, <laughs> protein powder, and sugar every single meal? So you could really like track it. You know what I mean? 100 grams of rice varies all the time based on how much sun there was there, and the starch, and blah, blah, blah. And what was it picked a bit earlier? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's so many variables. How much did you, of your food did you digest? How many calories did you consume? digest how many calories did you burn all oh, i top it into the expensive calorie meter that's fucking bullshit and yes 15 years ago i'd tell people crunch in how much fruit you eat to understand well you actually do need to eat a lot of volume to get you know x y z amount of calories as a ballpark figure but it wasn't telling people to count their calories so they're like oh you've had three thousand don't eat more today if you want to eat more eat more brothers and sisters okay there's not a single animal in nature who restricts its calories. It's like, I rescue birds all the time. I'm a big animal rescue bro as a vegan, etc. just in general. So I rescue animals all the time, especially birds uh, here in the city. And I give the birds unlimited food. Uh, there's never in the... I put them in a cage just so they don't fly and get lost and get hurt again. And then I release them once they're ready to roll. But I put them... I have a few different cages, and so I'll put a bird in a cage, and it's always got water. It's 24-7, 24-7, unlimited food for that bird. If it's a rainbow lorikeet, it's going to be getting fruit. 
Okay, and if it's a pigeon, it's going to be eating seeds. Okay, and maybe some nuts in there as well. And it's unlimited. There's always enough in there. You know, actually, the ants don't get in there and stuff like that, but there's always 24 7 around the clock. Fat bird's got the munchies at 2 a.m., it's got snacks. Okay, always, man. And these birds recover so fucking quick. Okay, I've got this pigeon the other day, it's got half its wing, just all its feathers just ripped off, tails all gone, and it's growing back so quick. And this little fucker's gonna be flapping away soon, you know what I mean? And uh, it looks healthy and it's like got energy and it's pumping around. I'm not fucking tracking its calories and like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just giving it, let the bird do its thing. Unlimited food and water. And I just give it its private space so it doesn't stress out. Because yeah, cortisol suppresses health. So, yeah, it's about understanding these things. But most people see a pigeon, like, yeah, it's a wet rat with wings, it's got disease, kill it, please. <laughs> fucking no idea. I'm the guy who catches the pigeon bare hands. Most people would fall over and you know, pop a fucking ankle trying to catch a pigeon. Good luck. So what I'm saying there is to let people know that's the detail that I go down to. If I can rescue a bird and get into a freaking racing pigeon quality, you know, then what can I do for you? Oh, I'm not a bird. Well, yeah, you're not, but uh, <laughs> you're a human. You're an organism. You're an animal. Okay, so if, if someone can't help one animal, how the fuck could they help a human who can talk? Okay. It, by helping animals who can't talk, you're just looking at visual cues, studying behavior, and optimizing that. Then now you're dealing with a human who can talk, who can also lie, but also has friends who will tell you what they're eating at home. <laughs> or you open up their fridge and go, well, who's this food for? It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to help people with weight loss and health than it is for animals. So I enjoy the animal aspect because it's a challenge. I, I, you know, now I know a lot about pigeons. I'm, always, but I'm always looking to learn more as well. Okay, a lot of Dunning Kruger. I think I know it all. But that's the deal. You have got to have a mentality and just do what it takes. In the but again, people go, oh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm gonna fast for thirty days. I'm gonna take a Zen pick. I'm gonna do fucking phenamine. I'm gonna fucking starve. I'm gonna do fucking carnivore. I'm gonna fuck my metabolism and become a big fat sloppy cunt. Yeah, I am. That's what happens, man. People are getting fatter and fatter and fatter and slower and sicker out there. Every city around the world. The sugar-free shit is going up. The sugar intake's going down. The fat's going up. The animal products going up. People are eating a diet just of fucking meat, man. And they're thinking they're going to get lean. <laughs> lean like me who lives on... I live on pizza, pasta, rice, sugar, fruit, sweet drinks. And I, I don't exercise. I fuck. I ride, I get shit done. Maybe a few times a, a month I might do a little 5k jog just because I love the feeling of getting some movement in me. I fuck, I ride, I get shit done. I don't exercise, I don't have time for exercise. What the fuck is that? Burning calories? I've got my Apple Watch, oh, I've got to burn 700 calories. Fuck that. What sort of life quality is that? Now let's digress a little bit. Life quality. How many people out there look amazing and are fucking depressed as fuck? Because how they're looking amazing is just not sustainable. And their cortisol's up, their hormones, are, other hormones are crashed, estrogen's down, testosterone's down, cortisol's up, and their glycogen is down, they just fucking just feel like shit. But they look amazing. Fuck that. It doesn't matter how good you look if you feel like shit. You failed, man. You failed, okay? It's like you could steal a Bugatti, do a picture on Instagram, and you think, fuck, man, where's the, where's the cops? I'm going to go to prison, fucking going to get raped again, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, <laughs> what? But you got the photo. Oh, my God, you got a Bugatti, bro, yeah. So it's, it's all about life quality and having energy. Energy just to spout out a video for 20 minutes, no jump cuts, no takes, no script, just off top, off cuff. Okay, how many people think James Smith PT can do that? The dude's so undercarved, he's like, uh-uh. Um, what, what, oh, the jump cut, uh, uh, what, uh. Hey, dude, these people out there just selling you bullshit. Oh, it's not another diet book. Yes, it is. Count your calories. Go, go to the calorie deficit. Boring, boring. Without jump cuts, can you imagine listening to these people? Boring. <laughs> and I feel sorry for them. It's definitely no hate, no hate towards any of them. I, I think they're so sad, they're so depressed. They're constantly upped on uh, stims, no stims and blood right now. 
They're constantly on stims. They're, you know, a lot of the bros are in the closet in diet land. And that's, you know, I just come out of the closet, man. You yeah? know, it's 2024, okay? Do what you want to do, okay? But again, a lot of guys, they can't because they're family and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But, uh, you know, I'm a straight male and I've got a lot of gay bros I know. Some in the closet, some out. And the guys who are living out the closet have a lot better quality of life. Okay? I'm just saying, okay? You just be yourself. If you're consenting adult, it's all good. Wow, we're, we're really covering some topics anyway. But anyway, that's just I'm just saying, like, scratch deeper, man. Get rid, get rid of this fucking calories and calories out bullshit. There's a total lie. It's a total fraud. Just fuck your performance. Fuck your life quality. Fuck your health. You get fucked. You miss out on your kids because you, you're not fully present because you're just like, oh, I'm fucking just going, just going from that. You know, your cortisol's up. When your cortisol's up, you can't really enjoy life. That's your fight or flight hormone. You're like, you know, and you see these parents out there just like, Fuck, man, I can't imagine these parents out there trying to do low-carb shit or calories in, calories out. No wonder their kids get so caught up in bad things. That's child abuse in my book. If you're a parent and you're trying to restrict your calories, restrict your carbs, they your cortisol's up, they get bad moods on your kids, and they're putting your trauma into them, come on. I mean, you're, just, you're not trying to be abusive, but you are being abusive. Stop it, please. It, this, 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 again, no one talks about this stuff. No one talks about this stuff. They don't know and or they just don't care. But most of it, they just don't know. They don't understand hormones. They don't understand uh, what, why 2 billion people around the world are very slim. Billion men, billion women. They don't understand that. They're just ignorant of that. They've got bigotry. Well, well, oh, well I don't care about Africa. I don't, I don't care about Asia. I don't care about Australia. I don't, all I don't care about is the US of A. US of A. <laughs> I remember one time I was in Thailand this guy had US bills and uh, they don't take US bills in Thailand for the most part especially out in the middle of nowhere and this guy's like US money this is good money this is you take this this is good money I was like dude like chill the fuck out like you're gonna kickbox your ass in a second you know they're like go to the currency exchange exchange the money come back with some Thai bar but just the the mentality of some people. And the same with Aussies. You know, we go travel to Bali and we fuck it up. We bring our road rage bullshit over there or whatever. So, you know, we teach bad habits around the world. So I'm just saying, you know, be mindful, people. Be mindful. Uh, but yeah, weight loss mentality, just focus on life performance. Okay? Look, I mean, look at me. Do you ever, ever see me fat? Some people, oh, you're, you're quite fat right now. You know, like, you, I, I want to see like an anorexic version of you. Some people might see I'm anorexic already. Some people say I'm, I'm too fat. I'm too lean. You know, people have different opinions. But at the end of the day, long term, always low body fat, always carbon up, always enjoying life, guaranteed. You can count on it. Every single day, I'm feasting. I'm living my, every single day, I'm living my absolute best life. I genuinely feel like the luckiest man on the planet. There's nobody in the world I'd rather trade places with in terms of like a full lifestyle trade. After you live their life, there's zero people out there. I mean, there's some people I'd like to be like, I wish it could be Mark Zuckerberg and just spout the fucking right message out there on Facebook. That'd be pretty cool, fucking cool. But in terms of lifestyle, there's no one I'd swap with. There's no one I'd swap with. And that's uh, that makes me feel like the luckiest man on the planet to be able to say that, honestly. But again, that all comes down to always having enough carbohydrate in your body that your cortisol's easier to control and you're not being controlled by your cortisol, okay? End of the day, do some deep dive on cortisol and sugar intake and how sugar lowers cortisol and how cortisol is the precursor to excess anxiety, okay? And just to wrap it up, I could talk for fucking hours and you know I have and I could. Anxiety, your, your brain is not here to make you happy. Your brain, your human brain is designed to keep you alive. So it's always gonna have some anxiety. You know, is this safe situation? Is that, what's that noise, you know? It's always gonna have anxiety. So when you take the Xanax and the Benzos and all that shit like Peterson does and you become a weak person, all right, taking a pill to control your brain, in my opinion, that's a weak choice. That's a fucking cop-out. When you could use mental focus and nutritional aspects, aka carbohydrate, potatoes, not Prozac, sugar, not <laughs> serotonin modulators, and get the lean results, feel your best, have the best sexual function, because all those medications, as a like, man, they fuck up your ability to nut and to get hard and give your lady the masculine presence she deserves and wants and she'll get it from someone else if you can't do it eventually all women like that okay women won't be held back they will get what they want if you know you know so you know so the anxiety 
in our brain is to keep us alive. So if you have excess anxiety, do my protocols and I guarantee you, your anxiety will go from a 10 down to like a 5 to a 4 to a 3. And just bounce around there. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll down to a 1. We're like, hang on, like I'm a bit too relaxed. Bring up a little bit because I can just walk out in the traffic and uh, cause all sorts of mischief. That's the deal there. So I see people restricting cars, restricting, you know, and just the anxiety is just fucking through the roof, man. They're getting the fights easy, they're getting fatter, their metabolism is slow, their TSH is going like, you know, three, four, five, ten. The insulin resistance through the insulin resistance. Oh my god, diabetes, diabetes, please. Diabetes type two caused by excess dietary fat. Every single diabetic researcher agrees with this point. When they want to uh, bring type two diabetes into these monkeys, animal cruelty, uh, the the little test subjects in the cages there in the labs, when they want to test their diabetes drugs, they have to make them little monkeys diabetic. What do they give them? It's never a high sugar diet. It's always a high fat diet. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Look it up. Ask any diabetes researcher. Anyone who works with Big Pharma, etc. Ask them, what diet do you give the monkeys to induce type 2 diabetes so you can test out the, the diabetes drugs? High fat diet every single time. Okay? Because a, lo a low fat diet, high sugar, can no ever, ever cause insulin resistance. Okay? But again, it's not what every, every everyday person knows about. You know? Anyway, that's the that's the wrap up. So you, look, you want to understand insulin resistance. Okay, and how fat, dietary fat, excess dietary fat, and excess dietary protein causes that. Uh, and if again, if you're looking, looking to lose weight, you're gonna get insulin down. It's insulin down, insulin down, insulin resistance down. So your fasting insulin is lower. Insulin spikes don't mean shit. It's your overall fasting insulin. Because let's let's say as an example, we're going on again. Let's say you work for me, right? And uh, you know you're what are we doing? We're, 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 we're packing and posting banana boxes and I'll give you like a cash injection and I'm like mate look here's a hundred bucks mate and you're like, oh my god you got a hundred bucks I've only been working for five minutes yeah yeah and then, uh, then I'll give you another five another hundred bucks for another two weeks <laughs> you're like fuck this I've got a hundred bucks for two weeks work this guy's a scam this guy's a con but what if I was giving you uh you know five bucks every hour okay yeah, for five bucks, not much, but it's still a lot more than a hundred bucks uh, every fortnight, isn't it? And you're working ten hours a day, you're working fifty bucks a day, okay? And then you're working seven days a week, getting like what do they get? Three fifty, three fifty a week, seven hundred bucks over the fortnight versus a hundred bucks, okay? So you got small amounts. So okay, fasting insulin, and you'll have more overall mass anabolic effect. If your insulin level is fasted and higher you'll have an overall higher level of insulin saturating your insulin receptor sites, your, you know, your whole body, than if you just have a couple spikes here and there. Okay, so it's a fasting insulin we want to bring down. And the best, to best test for diabetes is the oral glucose tolerance test. Millions and millions of people out there are type 2 diabetic, they don't even know it. And the man who discovered Harold Hemsworth, his name is Percival Harold Hemsworth, he discovered this difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Look him up, Harold Hemsworth. And uh, he, <laughs> he said the best diet to reverse type 2 diabetes is high sugar, low fat, low protein. From the man himself, from the man who discovered the difference between 1 and 2 diabetes, type 1, type 2 diabetes. All right, The man who coined the phrase insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance. His conclusion, after decades at the books and doing tests, was high carb, low fats, where it's at. And shout out to Robbie Bavaro for opening my eyes to Harold Hemsworth's work. But even Robbie and uh, Cirrus, these guys who run um, Mastering Diabetes, okay, okay, Mastering Confusion, they still today say that fruit can cause diabetes, so you should limit your fruit, okay? But then they'll turn around and say, no, fruit's great. And it's like, what the fuck? Okay, they'll say fruit and sugar, fruit can cause diabetes and obesity, don't eat it. But then they'll say, no, eat fruit if you're diabetic. Literally, literally. And I've invited Robbie and Cyrus on to the podcast to debate that in a friendly, professional way. <laughs> Radio silence. Even though I helped Robbie uh, launch his career about uh, 14 years, 12 years ago. Anyway, that's the digression. But that's the amount of confusion out there. Okay, so... You might be obsessed and dedicated and interested, not interested, sorry, obsessed, dedicated, committed 
to your best lifestyle. But if you get caught up with people who, who, who have way better marketing skills than I do, then you're just gonna fuck your life. And you only have, we only have one life that we know about, you know what I mean? Maybe there's an afterlife, who knows? We don't know, can't prove it, whatever. I'm just saying, you, no one has another day left on the planet that they can guarantee, all right? Every day could be your last day. Live it like that. Don't live it in an instant or distant world. Don't live in a high cortisol world. Don't live it in like, you know, I'm fat world, I hate this world, blah, blah, blah. I live it in your best world, in the best reality. And I recommend doing my protocols. Watch my videos, I've got over three, uh, I've got over 7,000 three videos on the topic or just get my ebooks if you want the, the quick way to learn what I'm teaching about. It's all very simple, very cheap, very effective. Guaranteed results. Guaranteed your best insulin sensitivity ever. If you're a type one or type two but diabetic, I guarantee your best insulin sensitivity ever. That's because I've been working with di uh, type one and type two diabetics for the last you know, 20 something years. And so I have that experience to uh, back up those claims. Anyway, that's the video. 30 minutes off the top, off the script. Off script, off the top, off the cuff, rambling on. It's, uh, that's the energy, man. Anyway, that's the deal. Get on.